And uh, is there something that they're presenting or? I can touch on that, I think, in a second. Um, so I, that room is, is kind of like a demo room for the vendors. So they can kind of show um, their products that they sell on their website or them. And it's kind of a show and tell their product. Gotcha. Okay. As well as well as a do it yourself kind of thing too. Ken's class, the P five P ten enclosure is gonna. I think it's gonna be an actual walkthrough of how to build one. So it's not only gonna be kind of a sit down and and you know get absorbed what they tell you. You can also build things with them or buy, purchase, and then eventually build. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, we should be live. Um, if you guys have any questions while I'm doing this, I'm I'm working blind, so I can't see if anybody raises your hand or anything. People help me out with that. If you have a question, um, just by all means unmute yourself and ask your question. So um, this is going to be totally interactive <laughs> for however you guys want to do it. Um, so what I got is basically the tools that I use for this. And then some of the examples. I did also have some bigger ones that I've done with the wreath and also the 46 inch spinner. And I always tape them as soon as I get them. I flatten them out, tape them. I go a little bit beyond the uh, crease and then I tape it so it holds it nice and tight. And that works good for pushing pixels in and everything. I do like the uh, number one uh, EMT hangers. I do use those quite often. I do also have um, JR's, oh my gosh, what's it called? Easy mount systems that I just got. I'm trying those out. Uh, the stuff that I've done last year after the show, I did have 84 mile an hour wind gusts. Uh, it blew down a couple sheds. I have nothing out here to stop the wind. I'm on a prairie basically uh, where we built the house. So we get the full brunt of the wind. I had nothing move. The stuff that was on my garage, the stuff that was on my porch, uh, just held simply by uh, pixel strips. With the PVC uh, bracing that I used, nothing moved whatsoever. So I do love that. Um, <laughs> For the ones that I have zip tied, I use these. Let me come over here. I forgot to grab those number one. Where'd my bag of them go? Um, and I even, I think I even forgot to put them down in the description, but they're number one at Home Depot uh, EMT hangers basically I have a ton of them in a bag and I don't know where my bag is oh, I'm just the seals. so you can also get them at ace hardware they're a little bit different design but these are basically what they are can Keith can you see that okay yes we can we see it. it's okay. good so the ones that I don't have them on the front side of the prop, I just have zip tied to the prop. I use these on my house itself, screw them in, and then I just basically clamp the, the PVC straight in there, put a bolt in it, I'm good. Sometimes they will strip out and I just use a quarter inch, quarter by 20 nut to put on the back of it just to kind of hold it uh, in place. For the ones that I did for the zip tie, I just basically went through the prop. It's the easiest way to do it. Straight through the prop, I measured up the bracket that I would need, the PVC uh, bracket, and then set it on top of it, and then just drilled through my holes. And I used a... Uh, Quarter inch drill bit for it. My larger props, the ones that have 
the T, and this is where I kind of got a little crazy. <laughs> I got it at Amazon. It's an inch and a half drill bit. And what I did is I basically made my T or the four way, I basically made it a slip. And I took a small piece of PVC that's just to hold it and basically just drilled out the center. So I'm going to embarrass myself if this slips out of my hand. But if you go slow, back it off every once in a while. But you can basically, you're honing or drilling out that center. So you can go all the way through. Not too loud for you guys, is it? No, it's fine. Okay. Gosh darn it, stay in there. Let me get my deadhead hammer real quick. Okay. And just go from both sides and kind of hone it out a little bit. And then And then basically you can get it to slip through if you hone it out. I spent a little bit more time doing it back and forth, hone it out pretty good. And then you can adjust it so you don't have to have each piece cut. You can center it off into the middle. What size drill bit was that? An inch and a quarter? Inch and sixteen. Yeah, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but yeah, it's an inch and a sixteen. And you could do that with the four ways and the T's, and it kind of makes it slip through a little bit easier. Um, I just grabbed this old piece of EMT. And I do use the white uh, Schedule 40. It's a little bit cheaper uh, to me with the shorter pieces. It holds up just as well as it would be with the Schedule 40, the more expensive gray ones. So to me, it's a little bit easier to use. And you can do this before the pixels or after. I've been kind of slacking on my pixel pushing. But this is a angel that I'm going to be putting on the grab. <coughs> Sorry. And so basically, I just want to firm it up a little bit just so she doesn't move around a whole lot. And if you haven't invested in uh, PVC cutters, they are truly awesome. You'll throw your, don't throw it away, but your uh, scarabell or your hacksaw, whatever you used in the past, it just cuts it slicker than it's not. So. Oh, you know what? I'm not going to do that. 
because this is going to be on the garage. I'm going to use my number one EMP hangers. And if you haven't invested <laughs> the thousand pound of the thousand count bag, you'll go through a ton of them with whatever we're doing in this hobby, basically. I have a question for you. Yes, ma'am. I have a one of those 10 foot spooky trees that Gilbert has. And um, mm -hmm. you know, it has these branches coming off and I'm in Texas and we have like crazy, insane winds. So right. I'm trying to figure out how to frame that without adding, cause you know, you, yes, I could, I could jigsaw some plywood or whatever, but um, it can add a lot of weight, right? And so I also want to make sure I can take the off so I can store it. So my husband, husband doesn't go insane. <laughs> right. Storing it. So I'm trying to figure out how to use the PVC method that you're going to do that. I mean, because um, the branches are huge and they, so frankly, they just have, but I could use this, right, to, to do yeah. the same kind of thing. Yeah, with, with something that big, I would probably want to use um, Schedule 40 just for a little bit of more uh, rigidity, basically. Okay. And then your... Um, your elbows, your knees, and I have a 45 around here. That was, would be basically, if I was looking at it, I would kind of lay out my PVC and then decide from there where I want to go out to the branches. Because I could use the T's and stuff to kind of go up the branches. I don't have to go all the way up the branch. I just want to kind of go you know, halfway up or something. I don't necessarily want to go all the way to, well, I guess I could go all the way to the it wouldn't matter, but I don't know what the Yeah, you definitely, is. you definitely could. It just, it all depends on how you want to, how much you want to firm up the, uh, the sides. Right. You could use your, yeah, like, of course I'm not near as big. I have the uh, stable that I'm using and it's, it doesn't have nineties and 45s. Right. So I've kind of used the, the bending ability, the flexibility of the schedule 40 to kind of firm it up. Okay. I just use a few more of the number one hangers. What's the number one hanger? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. It's <laughs> the EMT hanger. EMT hanger. Okay. And you get those. And Home Depot or Ace Hardware. I prefer the Home Depot ones a little bit better. Okay. They're called EMT hangers? Okay. Yes. Okay. I came late. I'm sorry. I'm probably backing everybody up a little bit, but okay. <laughs> no, no, you're absolutely fine. No problem. It's a, it's a busy day, so we're flexible. Okay. So those are EMT. Okay. And then those, how do those go on? Those are, those are the ones that Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. And show. okay. Well, I was just going to show you. I'm, I'm answering as you go. So I mount the screw in the hole here. Yeah. I do mount to my house. I do put holes in my house. I yep. plan on being here a really long time. I can always fill them later. Um, so if this is mounted to, say, my garage that uh -huh. is vertical, then when I go, let me tighten this up a little bit. So when I go to mount my, um, my angel, of course, it would be up off of it a little bit, but I would basically just snap it in, and then I would put my bolt through to clamp it tight. Uh, okay, gotcha. Now, with this one here, because of the wind that I have, 
when I go to put this up, I'll have a T here and I'll run one out to her head. Okay. The wings will be okay, but I'll, I'll run a T out here and then I'll do a four way down here and I'll kind of run up this way and then one out towards her feet probably, maybe with a 45 to give it a little bit more rigidity down here at the bottom because of the wind that I go through. Right, we have the same wind probably. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the spooky trees are gonna have a two by four frame on the back to keep them up. I stake, I have to stake them in or else they're gonna mm -hmm. fall, you know what I mean? So yeah, okay. You know, and, and you can use this just as easy with the, um, uh, with the two by four frame. You could actually branch off of the two by four frame. <laughs> I'm pulling out more goodies here, hang on. Now these are actually PVC clamps. This is very. This is the plastic version of what Tony Bigda did uh, in his Bigda fan. This is just the plastic version of it. So if you wanted to mount the PVC to the wood frame first, or vice versa, you can simply use these to screw into your wood, and they would just basically go right over the PVC. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay. So, and then if you know, even if I was going to leave this flat up against the house, then I don't know if you can catch the angle, it would go flat with the PVC there. For me, it just doesn't give me enough room. That's why I like those EMP hangers. Right. No, the hangers would be good for my ghosts and stuff. So I can sure up my ghost. Okay. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm going to drill out a four way real quick. Piece of it, you just um, mute me. Can I ask one other question? I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Go ahead. I was, I'm trying to figure out how to do these spooky trees. They're, they're giving me a headache. Um, so if I use the PVC, PVC support and I wanted to be able to take a branch off, is there any kind of bracket or anything or um, that I can use where they just come undone and then I can store them separately? Because what I was going to do, this is my thought process, is that I was going to get custom strings for each of those branches, okay? Where I could just plug them in um, and then unplug them and then be able to just take off the top branches and store them separately like that. It can't, I was trying to think if there's some kind of bracket that I could use where I could run the PVC down, but then I could take it off. You know what I'm, does that make sense? I guess it, if that is it does and I'm picturing it in my head. I just gotta try to put it into words. I mean, maybe that's a zip tie that I just cut off, I guess, maybe. That would, to me, that would be the easiest thing is just cut the zip ties because okay. they're, I mean, they're a few cents each. Okay, that makes sense. Have you had any of your zip ties pop? Say again? Your, have you had any of them um, actually come off or um, break in the wind with this kind of structure? Um, few to none uh, that mm -hmm. I'm thinking. Okay. Because I I haven't replaced any well, yet because I don't normally look at that until you know yeah. say the setup time you know next right. month. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. So there's basically an example of the slip tee, 
I honed it out a little bit more and it slides a little bit better than that the T that I did, but this is the four way if I'm not blocking it with my head, sorry. And then you can adjust this to wherever you need to go to, to get the rigidity that you're looking for. Maybe a zip tie here, another zip tie down here, and then one over here and trim off this back half. So PVC is, I think, almost our best friend with this kind of hobby because I use the heck out of it. What size PVC pipe do you like to use? I use three quarter, three quarter only. Yeah, that's the best. Um, the, I got some half inch and for me up here, it's just, there's not enough rigidity to it. There's too much flex. So I don't like it at all. The builds that I'm doing tomorrow with the Starflake spinner is all done with three quarter EMT, or I'm sorry, three quarter PVC schedule 40. Um, it's just my go-to. I haven't gone any bigger than that. Now, what, because you of in, price. what you have in front of you, is that schedule 10 or is that schedule 45? This is schedule 40. Okay. Um, find one with it on there. 480, yeah, schedule 40, if it's going to focus okay. in for you. So do you often use the schedule 80 gray pipe? No. Um, the only thing I use Schedule 80 on is my roof line that I have the pixels zip tied to. That's about the only Schedule 80 I use. And that goes in a, I think it's called the candy system that goes on your ridge cap. And that's just because I didn't want the flexibility or the, the bow in it in between the candy system. Let me grab one and show you what I'm talking about in just in case. Yeah, we didn't catch that. Oh, I'm sorry. I got a ton of them. I was stretching. I was probably too far from the phone. Yeah. So these are the, the, I think it's called the candy system. I haven't looked it up yes, for a yes, year yes. probably, but they open up and that it's got two sets of, of cleats on it that will attach to your ridge gap, ridge cap. And then, uh oh, there we go. And then the PVC pipe fits right down on there. And then I have my, I, I use score pixels for it. I just zip tie them every so often on it. And I believe it was called Canny Systems. Like just search Canny System, C-A-N-N-Y. And that's what I use. Uh, the Schedule 80 on is that just to take out the, the sag on top of the house. Uh, any other questions so far? Any other props that you want to discuss on what you're doing on them? Do you find that PVC ever gets too brittle over a couple of years use? Um, you know, I'm going to say no for a couple of reasons. One, my display faces south. So of course I get the Southern, but because I'm up in Montana, they don't get a whole lot of the evening sun and they're not out in this evening sun a whole lot because they're behind the props. So I have not had one snap on me. Um, even, well, <laughs> the one that I'm using to hang the, the phone up with is last year. And I bent that into probably a three foot, diameter circle um here a couple days ago and i didn't have any problems with it so for me it's dry up here we don't have a ton of humidity today it's a little humid in the garage but it's getting hot it's like 75 degrees <laughs> just kidding <laughs> um <laughs> but uh i haven't had any issues with it mainly because of those couple factors they only see a little bit of the sunlight for my 
do you think spray painting also would prevent something like that for people that are I was, susceptible to that? Yeah, I was just getting ready to say that. Now, my Schedule 80 and the Schedule 40 that I do use up on top of the house that are in the, the sun a lot more during the day, I do have them spray painted with UV spray paint. And I just use black with UV protectant. So yeah, I have two different kinds, the high performance enamel and then the, just the undercoat. And they're on year two, the Schedule 80 that I have painted, they're on year two, coming up on year three, because I'm still a newbie, so. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? I know this was kind of 30 minutes. I didn't have anything else to fill in, so. The drill uh, do you want to? I'm sorry, the drill bit you were using to, to do out the middle again, that was one inch and what? I'm sorry. One inch and one sixteenth. One sixteenth, okay. Yep. And I got it off Amazon. I picked up, actually, I picked up a couple at the same time. Um, one, because you could do the same thing with uh, regular EMT. And that might be something, I'm sorry, I don't know your name because I'm working blind. That's okay. Um, <laughs> Jackie. <laughs> Jackie, okay. <laughs> I thought you sounded familiar from the Wednesday night uh, existentials. But yes, I've been around a little bit. <laughs> yeah. You could also do this with EMT. In your case, the metal EMT being that the arms are so spread out. Right. You may want to do that with EMT. And you can do um, the T's the same way. Um, I didn't even think about doing it with EMT. I just have to find my T. Oh, I found the drill bit for them, but they're not next to it. I use a seven eighths drill bit for the EMT to drill out the, the T's for the EMT. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes, we can, Brian. I'm on yeah. the other side of the garage, so I just want to make sure. Yes. Oh, it's on the table, but I don't find me. I haven't pulled them out this year, so I don't remember where I put them. But this coupler will be enough. But you can do the same thing. Actually, I did it for my four by eight matrix. I used EMT for that with a seven eighths drill bit and pretend this is a T. <laughs> take the back cover off of it. Normally it's got two screws. Take that back cover off and then seven eighths drill bit will drill straight through it and that'll give you a slip this way um, for EMT. Okay. And then again, just simply cut your zip ties, take it apart, put it down. I would think of if you're going to be taking it down and putting it back, probably a numbering system. Yeah. Yeah. Duct tape or painter's tape. Yeah, I'll have it numbered. Um, I'm pretty good at that now because <laughs> I did a <laughs> I did a eight foot skeleton. I did the dancing skeleton from Gilbert, and so I learned a lot of stuff from that guy. It has a two by four frame, so it's a little bit different. Um, the spooky mm -hmm. trees don't. So, excuse me. Sorry, I was getting a drink. Cool. Anything else, guys and ladies? Sorry. So with the example that you're doing right now with the angel, are you using the zip tie to help hold it in place while you get everything measured? And then you're gonna use your standoff straps to get it spaced up? Because right now you're covering over some of your pixel holes. So right. you gotta make some space somehow. Yeah, um, and actually I do, I'm gonna bring up, this is Gilbert, uh, I think it's Snowflake A or B, one or the other. Um, Basically, when I zip tie it to it, I just push down that part. Oops, sorry, missed the camera. I just push down that part of the pixel evenly across. And this was up on the garage. So I had um, EMT hanger here, here. I had four of them on it. And then I just push it in, screwed it in from the top and bottom. So this is with pixels in. Now, 
this was just an example because I've been kind of slacking on pixel pushing. I got 5,000 I got to do, but I had other stuff I wanted to get going first. Uh, here in the next two weeks, I'll have all those pushed. But for this is just an example for today because it was a prop that I had that wasn't done. Um, well, I don't need to do that. I do have the ice princess over here, ice queen. And this isn't going on the, the garage. And don't laugh, I, I missed a hole, so pretend these are filled as well. I don't know if I can pretend. <laughs> Who hasn't missed, right? I got to do a little bit of splicing. Um, but if I was doing this one, I would actually have more uh, 45s and pretend this is a, a T. But I would basically do it like the old style spinner for the arms because of the wind. And these are fairly thin. I think I'd firm them up a little bit. And I would do it like the old style spinners are done with them all being 45 degrees off from each other. And I would probably do all of the thinner arms on it around. I just don't have enough four ways. I didn't even think about getting four ways. But if you can envision, you know, like that, but on each small arm. And then kind of snuggle it down in with the pixels to brace it. Hope that answers your question, kind of, sort of. Now, do you guys have any practices that you do with it? Something that I'm missing, something I can learn off of? Um, <laughs> do, are you, is your house brick or is it siding? It's siding. I have um, okay. masonite siding. Okay, gotcha. Or concrete siding, basically. And I use... Coming over here to the other side again. I use self tappers when I go into the side or into the siding. Hey, I'm sorry to interrupt y'all. Uh, Brian, you're our host in room one. Can you pass that to Tony Bigda? I'm host in room one. Yeah, because uh, Tony it got kicked, his computer shut down. He's so it passed out. So can you transfer? Thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, anybody have any questions, Keith? You want to get the raffle started? Yeah, I'll get that going. <laughs> I'll. Uh, Run inside. Oh, look, the host got passed to you for some reason, Brian. Oh, shoot. I'm okay. Hang on. You're a host in both rooms. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. It's all good. How are you doing, Ed? Uh, stressed as you could imagine. Yes, yes. Have, try and enjoy yourself, though. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Hey, class been going great. I've been monitoring y'all. Everything's been going awesome. So. All right. Good. Thanks. Just again, just iterate. Thank you, Ed and the team. This is a, an amazing effort. <laughs> Oops, I'm not going. Sorry.
And then as soon as he passed, okay, good. All right, so now I can screen share and we get this raffle going. All right, everyone, I got everyone here. Um, I realize now we are at 47 and we're at 47. So um, I think I got everyone. So the prize for this round is a shot glass from the Professional Triers Podcast. <clears throat> and so um, let's get this going. So all I have to do. Hey, can you stop stream just real quick? Sure. I forgot to before I passed it. And I'm going to see you later. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining. I know it wasn't perfect, but we're trying. Are you done with this one, Brian? Because I bet you're going until four. Yeah, uh, Brian, I, I think is done. Um, okay. He uh, he had to turn off his mic for his headset, but he's going to be in the other room in a second. Um, okay. But okay, so let's get this raffle going. I'll go screen share one more time. Um, so again, the prize is a shot glass for professional triers. I have everyone's names over here on the left and just click the select prize and wait for a minute. And here we go. So the winner is uh, Peter Friedman. Peter Friedman, do we have a winner? Speak up. Well, Peter is here. You are here? Peter is in the house. Peter, hey, thanks, man. Okay, great. I'm just going to take a screenshot of this. So you're locked in. I won. <gasps> a professional tears podcast shot glass. Tears. <laughs> it's triers. <laughs> triers. Close. <laughs> Thank you for playing. Wonderful. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Russell, for putting okay, on. finding all these guys. Is Brian McVeigh still in here? He had to step. Uh, he he turned his computer off. I don't. He's not here now. Okay, because he's the host in room one, and they can't do the raffle. Oh, great. Um, okay. Sorry. It's okay. Let me message him. Okay. Room one, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. You're supposed to pass it to Tony Bigda. Yep, yep. I just sent that. Tony Bigda, pass it to Tony. I had it. I had it, but something glitched and it, it passed it to him. Right. Okay. Thanks. It for some reason Bigda got it, it dropped and it passed to him for some reason. So yeah, it's always it's like alphabetical or thing or some weird yeah, thing. I understand. Like Thanks. Okay, so uh, who's going to be next is um, Gary. He has his class up next. Gary, are you here? I just saw you. I, I, I am. I just had to unmute. Okay, I'm going to make you co-host. And if Brian can't go on, I will cover for him. Should I start now or should we wait till? Four? Yeah, let's wait to the your your scheduled time. Okay. Because uh, you know people are going to join at that point. Uh, for people that are here already, please uh, pin uh, Gary's um, screen so you can see his video the whole time. I've attended a few of the classes. It looks uh, like it's going very well. Great job. Yeah, I think everyone's doing a great job and it's yeah. enjoyable from all sides, I think. Absolutely. I think somebody mentioned it earlier that, you know, it's it's unfortunate this year what the situation we're all in, but it's great that we can use something like this to really feel connected and, um, you know, build something like this. Again, yeah, it's, it's true. And it's, it, it just goes for the spirit of the people that are in this hobby. Exactly. You know, it's, I don't think you could say this can be made or have the same potential with any other group. 
No, I, I don't think so either. I, it, it, it's amazing. That's one of the things that drew me into this whole thing. Um, I started about three years ago and like everybody else, so there's a lot to learn. And I'll tell you, there, there was somebody around the corner every step of the way to give you a hand. Definitely. Um, it was amazing. And I'm thinking this, this particular presentation I'm doing mostly um, will be newer people because it's an enclosure build. Yes. And uh, we'll try to get that point across to how helpful everybody is in this uh, community. Yeah. And your mounts is just so handy and so crucial at this point where it, it we're almost at the point that everything's plug and play, you know, yep. and yours, it's just a, a key piece to that puzzle. I'll tell you, I haven't, I haven't turned X lights on uh, since last new year. So I, I have a lot to learn again, but uh, I assume it's much easier actually. Yeah. Uh, Brian, I'm going to make you host. It's... And then also, did you get my message about uh, giving, passing the host to Tony? <laughs> Yeah, he got booted and I was next in line. I got room one on the phone, so it just automatically went to me so it didn't kick everybody. So, yeah, I got it. I got it to him. So uh, I was just telling Gary that we're probably still going to wait until the scheduled time to start. That's only 15 minutes away. Yeah, that's fine if everybody's cool with that. Um, right when I was disconnected, somebody had a, a question or a comment. Are they still in here? And what was it? Is... Uh, Ed was the one that was kind of voicing as soon as you were walking away. Um, oh, okay. No problem. Yeah, Ed was just making sure that you were aware of the situation. Yeah, I had to come. I didn't take my phone out to the garage with me. I guess I should have, but... Too many electronic devices around. Um, I'm going to step away. I'm going to go shut off the feed from the garage. Okay. So I'll be right back. A PVC is a good material for mounting in general too, because it's super light, right? So just wanted to make that comment. I don't know if that was even said. <laughs> yeah, three quarters inch is perfect. Those EMT connectors are great. Um, if you guys haven't checked those out before, um, I know that the 3D printing community likes to reinvent that, making you know mounts for mounting pro uh, props up. But those EMT clamps are just, you know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. They're perfect, and they almost have the perfect spacing too for where um, 